Okay guys, here we have another problem dealing with writing the equation of an ellipse in standard form. And we're given the following information, right? We're given the center, we're given the vertex or the vertices which are going to occur on the major axis, right? We're talking about an ellipse, so we have a major and a minor axis. So our vertex or vertices will always happen on our major axis. And our co-vertex or co-vertices is happening here. And again, that will happen on the minor axis. So Taking a look at this, right, we can see that our vertex or vertices is happening, which appears to be on the x-axis, right, 6, 0. So if you were to draw out this picture, right, let's just go ahead and put our center point here, right, and one of our vertices is at 6, 0. So if we go over 6, right, and up 0, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, right, you make a point. Okay. We know that that same thing is going to happen in the other direction. So starting at the center point, we're going to go over 6. So negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, negative 6, right? And make a point. Okay. Again, these are going to be our vertices, and these are occurring on the major axis. So look what's happening here. Our major axis is happening on the x-axis, meaning that we are going to be dealing with a horizontal ellipse here. Okay. So this is going to be a horizontal ellipse. Okay, let's go ahead and put our co-vertex or co-vertices on here. So one of them is occurring at 0, 4, so we're going to go up 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, and then we're going to go in the opposite direction. So starting at the center, we're going to go down 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 4, right? Now we know that the full side always occur on the major axis. So we have two of those. Those are two fixed points, right, that occur on the major axis. And they're going to occur somewhere around here and here, right? And there is a way that we can actually find that out, right? Remember, there is a relationship between our vertex, our co-vertex, and our foci, right? And we can write that using the following equation where we have c squared equal to a squared minus b squared where C, okay, is our foci, A is going to be our vertex on the major axis, and B is going to be our co-vertex, right, on the minor axis, okay? So if we solve for C here, that will tell us where our um, uh, foci are occurring. So let's go ahead and do that. So we know that A, in this case, right, is going to be 6, right? We're talking about the uh, vertex on the major axis. It's going to be 6, right? So if you were to start at the center and count the distance over to that vertice, in this case it would be 6, right? A distance, same thing, it's 6, right? So we're going to put 6 here, so we have C squared, so this is another color. C squared equals, this is going to be 6 squared, right? And the same thing with your um, uh, co-vertex, right? Just the distance to the center, right? It's going to be 4. So we're going to have minus 4 squared, okay? So let's go ahead and do this out. We'll have C squared equals, so we know that 6 squared is going to be 36, minus 16, okay? So right now we have 36 minus 16, so we have 36 minus 16, and we get 20. So this is going to be equal to 20. And so we simply just have c squared equals 20. We're going to take the square root on both sides and we get c is equal to plus or minus. So the square root of 20, we get when we do that, so the square root of 20, we get plus or minus 4.47. 4.47. Okay, so that is going to be where um, both of our foci are occurring. So again, it's occurring on the major axis, in this case the x, right? So you're just going to go over 4.47. So 1, 2, 3, 4, right about here, that will be one foci. Same thing, 1, 2, 3, 4, right negative, right about here. Okay, so we have all our points on here, right? Last step, let's just go ahead and write out the equation of this ellipse. So we'll erase this, and if we take a look, since we're dealing with a horizontal ellipse, remember there's two different equations you use when you're dealing with ellipses. You'll have one for a vertical and one for a horizontal. In this case, we have a horizontal ellipse because the major axis is occurring on the x, right? So our equation is going to look like the following. We're going to have x squared all over a squared plus y squared all over 
b squared equal to 1. Okay? Notice how my a value is underneath the x, right? That's because we're dealing with a horizontal ellipse. If it was vertical, our a value would be underneath the y, right? And the b value would be underneath the x, right? All you have to do is go ahead and fill this in. So let's just go ahead and do that. So we'll have x squared all over. So we know that our a value is talking about our vertex on the major axis. So all you're simply going to do here is do 6 squared, which is going to be 36. All right, plus y squared, our b value, is going to be our co-vertex happening on the minor axis. So in this case, we're going to do 4 squared, which is 16. Okay, all equal to 1. And this problem is now complete. All right, that is it. And again, notice if you were just given this equation, you'd be able to pick out um, very quickly that this is going to be a horizontal ellipse because the bigger of our two values on the denominator, right, right here is underneath the x, telling us that this is horizontal, right? If our 36 was underneath the y and our 16 was underneath the x, right, well, that would tell us that we're dealing with a vertical, right? So you're looking for the bigger of the two values and whatever it's underneath that tells you what type of ellipse it is. Okay, and if you want at this point, you could go ahead and just draw out the ellipse uh, the best you can. Um, I'm not the best drawer, right, but try what you can, right? And that is it.